there for, really, a sub nine minute time. Fancy Trona will be the pacemaker, take him out at 2.58 for the first kilometre. There's that Almeyu, world under 20 championship silver medalist last year, but world number one at just 18 years of age this year. One to Mark McGagan, eighth in Tokyo, third in Florence in that really fast race. There's Beatrice Chepko, edge the world record holder. We're coming back into Fino of France, what a year she's had. A national record in France at the beginning of June. Three national records last year. Mishmash Rimsek, the Slovenian, was sixth in Tokyo. She really is uh, already this season great form. Two national records at Doha and Florence. Abebe is in there for Ethiopia. 9-11 athlete this year. Puziani and Muleta. Lomi Muleta, fourth in the Ethiopian Championships last year. So not in Eugene, even though she's very much world class. Chemutai, the Commonwealth bronze medalist. Cohen of uh, Israel, who was fifth uh, in the European Championships back in. Berlin and, uh, in 18, and then 8th in the European Championships last year. Amy Pratt is in there for Great Britain as well. 7th in those World Championships last year in Eugene. She uh, had a wonderful year. Her personal best goes back to that uh, final. 9.15 she ran in Eugene. And Leah Meyer of Germany is on the inside there. And ran a recent personal best for 5,000 metres. So not a big field, but a really high calibre field as they get underway. We're looking for a... 2.58 clocking through one kilometre and then six minutes at two kilometres whether or not Fancy Trono who is a good steeplechaser herself can get them to 2k, I don't know that's a big ask, running six minutes from the front, but if she can set it up nicely with these first three laps or so that will be enough, and it is quick Steve, I mean crikey, that is uh, Beatrice Chetkovic in second place, the world record holder world champion back in 2019 who probably on the flat is the best of all these athletes. She's a fabulous athlete over 3,000 metres without barriers. Brilliant 5,000 metre runner. She's tall and strong. Beautiful looking runner, Chepkovic. But it's been a while since she's really been in that top form where she can win races at leisure. Her world record is almost sounds fictionally fast at 8.44. The next fastest in history is over seven seconds slower. But is Chepkovic going to be in uh, winning form tonight? Yeah, I think it's interesting um, what Chemitai has gone to the Olympic champion who you mentioned who's also been really out of sorts. You know, she's not running anywhere near what she was in 21 uh, you know, and a lot of 22 as well. However, you know, we've been watching these new people come through, the likes of Jacqueline uh, Jepkoic, who isn't here today, Finn Cheritic, these world junior champions, and of course, Alma Yu, who ran who chased... Um, uh, Jacqueline, uh, Ch sorry, Faith Cheriton Chorman, the World Junior Championships, and then has really have ever run under nine minutes. And she was so close in Florence. So the pace here is hard. At, uh, at least she's got some company. It's great that the two names, the big names, if you like, are ahead of her. But I think Alba is the one who's got the best chance to get the quickest time here. So we've got the world record holder in second place. The pacemaker, by the way, to Fancy Toronto, is stuttering awfully before every single barrier. It's I mean, she could run so much quicker herself. Her personal best is 9.27. But so far, I've seen a stutter. Massive. Look at oh. that. Before every... She's not sighting the barriers at all. And that's a, an essential skill for a great steeplechase. We've got the world record holder in second place. You've got the Olympic champion in third place. And you've got the world number one, this outstanding young talent. Only two steeplechases so far this year. Second in Doha. And then that really quick time, almost under nine minutes in Florence. Almehu in uh, fourth place. The gaps, though, have opened up really quickly. Yeah, they're on pace, though, and, and your Chepko has been smart. She checked out that time. She doesn't want to get stuck in the legs of Chirono, who's been slowing down, as you said, and all over the place. Now steps aside, so it's going to be Chepko in the front, effectively. It'll be interesting to see whether or not the youngster wants to take this on. If the lights... Mike might just start to edge away. They already are. Chep Koch is not going to hang with the pace that's going to be required to get them to nine minutes. But, Tim, that was an even pace race. It was. Yes, and Alba, you can finish very, very quickly. Just because the lights move ahead doesn't mean when we, it, you know, as long as they don't let it go too far, she could still pull it back in the last 600 metres. However, she's got to beat them. Well, that first kilometre, 258.7, really good pace making by Fancy Toronto, along with the stuttering, but we won't uh, go on about that. She did a great job to set this up nicely. Almeida there, sensing that it's faltering. Chep Koech, perhaps a reluctant leader. Chemutai, not keen to go past into the lead at all either. But it's a nice to see, Steve. 
the freshness, the, the sort of, I don't want to say naivety, but the, the willingness to go to the front of Almeida there, the youngster, just 18. She was obviously getting a bit frustrated that Chep Kovic slowed him down. And I'm not sure, but maybe Chep Kovic speeded up a little bit there to stop the Ethiopian coming past her. They're bunching a little bit now. And in fact, those behind closing on them a little bit as they, you know, that first kilometer was quick. It was, wasn't far outside world record tempo, certainly uh, a way, way under nine minutes. So this middle kilometre, I wonder if it will show a, a really significant slowing against the clock. Yes, the other two Ethiopians, uh, Moleto, who made a right mess of that uh, previous barrier there. And then behind her, Zerfe won the again, And she's very good as well, but just that didn't really latch onto the pace early on. And uh, she's what I'm saying. I think this will be interesting because I think Al Mayu has got the measure. It's good to see Chemitai back in the mix here. Chep Koich, as we've said, has been coming back, but they don't fancy nine minute pace. They don't think they can take that on. Not going to try and run away from Almayu. So she's looking around now as if to say, well, have I got to do it? Is anyone else going to go? And I think she's just caught in two minds here, Tim, whether to crack on, try and get the pace going a bit, or, or work with these two because she knows how experienced they are. Well, I think she should crack on. There is again, she comes around the outside and gets a good sight of the barrier. Looks full of running, doesn't she, the youngster? Chemutai, only 11th in Doha. That's her only steeplechase of this year before tonight. Uh, when they get to the far side of the uh, far end of the back straight, they'll be at two kilometres. But Almeu just sitting in behind them here. Don't have any form for on the flat outdoors, although she had a great indoor season, 8.35 for 3,000 indoors, and then a, well, a 4.11, 1,500 metres. Has she got the beating here of Chet Coet, who, frankly, is controlling this and running it the way she wants. She wants to be in front, but she doesn't want it too quick. Now, they were looking for six minutes at two kilometres. That's coming up any second, but this second kilometre, undoubtedly quite a lot slower. 2.58 the first kilometre. Look at this. There it is, a 3.07. Nine seconds slower. Yeah, we can see the bright lights, and I was counting six or seven seconds ahead. And Almeyu, and she definitely, all three of these women at their best can, can sprint incredibly well over the last, couple of laps, certainly the last 600 meters. But this is a great race, setting it up really nicely. Two to go, and it's good to see, as I said, Chebatai back and running well with Chep Koic, but this youngster is full of running. And I think she's just not sure quite what to do here now. Maybe for the first time, just trying to go to the front and test the other two out. But this isn't a real push yet. Still two laps to go. Almeo at last gets her nose in front for the first time. Chep Koic slots in right behind the Chemutai, watching them carefully. The three of them clad identically, running in uh, almost stride for stride there. But Almeo now... Perhaps we'll start striding out a little bit more for the first time. She looks hungry to lead for the last two or three laps. And at the age of 18, you have to admire her willingness to really push on. Takes that one and then accelerates off the barrier. And we'll be looking here for good Diamond League points as well after that win in Florence, which was uh, so impressive, remember. She won there by some three and a half seconds from Chepkoic, Jacqueline Chepkoic, that was. Five. Yeah, I agree, Tim. Chepkoic been hanging on since uh, they went through last time. It'll be the bell this time, and she's not going to figure. It's going to be between these two, and I think Chepkoic is also having to work hard just to stay with Amayu. Chepkoic definitely hurdles better, but this could go to either of them here. Who's got the best last lap? Amayu keeps putting her foot on the barriers. You've got to clear them. Now you're losing so much momentum when you do that put your foot on top of the barrier and then let your body come over that foot just hurdle the barriers you've got to be able to do that at speed she does it again there it's almost like a tick it's not necessary when you're going at this speed those barriers are not very high and certainly this is a, a last lap a last 200 you can see chet coach has got her in her sights hurdles that one extravagantly chet coach and onto the shoulder of the youngster now kicks hard. You've got to remember here that Chep Kovic, the world record holder, is a fabulously high quality 3,000 and 5,000 meter runner. Has she got the speed here off the final barrier? Almeida, the world number one, is two meters down. And that gap is growing. And Chep Kovic rambling into form. Those world championships six weeks away. Watch everyone. Chep Kovic, the world
world champion 2019 in Doha is rounding into form and she's taken this one, controlled the race and again has run a really clever race to win by three or four metres there from the world number one Almeu. The uh, meeting record has been smashed, 9.16 it was, 9.05 the winning time there from Chet Cohen to bring it back into the uh, 21st century with a, a quicker time. But Chet Kowicz, well, that'll boost, boost her confidence, I guess, Steve, as well. It's a while since we've seen a win so comprehensively, so control a race that well. Well, there's two, three talking points there, Tim. Yes, absolutely. Good, your Chet Kowicz rounding back into the sort of form which uh, she wants, and uh, winning races, that's the big thing, winning races against one of the best young talents around at the moment. However, for Almeyu, you cannot, as you said, on the last lap, she was beaten by Faith Cheritage in the World Junior Championships last year as well, the, the other very good young Kenyan. When you are going at full pace, putting your foot on the barrier, you're just losing that momentum on every single one of those last five barriers, and again at the long, sorry, the long jump, the water jump as well. And she's strong and she's quick and she'll get quicker and stronger. But Jeff Coach using her experience here with 200 to go, getting to the front. And the gap that she got at that point was the gap she still had at the end. And look here, she strides into that barrier, still putting the foot on Almeyu. And yes, she's got a little pace off the last barrier, but Jeff Coach was away. That gap was there. Good race. Really enjoyed that. 9-5 as well. Season's best for Jeff Coach too with that victory. Still over 20 seconds outside her world record from back in 2018.